my dad's theory wherever we go. I go, Dad, when I'm with you, it's both of our powers together to bring in the sunshine. But anyway, it's great to be with you. It's great to be with Pastor Al and uh, Georgina, my sister. Uh, I've known them for many years. Even before he was saved, they were dating. And to see how far they've come. And now 23 years of marriage? 23 years of marriage and still going strong. I also have uh, my wife, of course, is with me tonight. And it's great to travel with your family. I have, we have all five kids here. We got Cruz, we got Jordan over there. The little ones are probably in kids' game. Three of the other, three other kids, uh, Brooklyn, Cody, Tyler. And it's a handful, but it's a blessing. So I want you to get your Bibles and turn with me to Isaiah. And I want you to stick with me and stick to the end. Are you hungry? Not for food, but for the word. Isaiah 43. You know, I have the privilege, as you turn there, of growing up in this ministry. I just turned 50, which I can't believe I'm that old or that young, maybe. But uh, to see from the very beginning, in the pioneer generation, I was able to be with Pastor Ed. Pastor Steve, Pastor David Martinez, all these pioneers, spent time with them. They invested in my life. And uh, to see how far God has brought us. And then in the Joshua generation, how the next wave hit. And to see what God has done through uh, the promises that he's given us. 45, 2 and 3. 54, 2 and 3. We're going to expand. Also, how we, start, we started you know, a name for the youth. God's anointed now generation which now that we consider the Joshua generation. And now we're moving into a new now, a new now. And I want to read the scripture, Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God has done great things in 52 years, and he wants to continue with this new wave he's developing with this new generation that's coming up. When I say generation, it doesn't mean age-wise. Whoever wants to be in it could be a part of it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word this evening. I pray that you would minister to your people. Challenge us in our calling. Challenge us to be the best we could be for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell the person next to you, say, God is doing a new thing. And you may be seated. I was reminded of this scripture, and this happened to be a scripture that the, the guy that gave my dad scriptures, we consider him like a prophet, because every scripture he gave up, my dad has come to pass so far. And he gave me and Kim this scripture when we were on an Ontario High School Auditorium waiting for our building to be done. And he gave me the scripture, and it gave me hope that this new building will get done. Not to consider the past four years that I was trying to get this building done in a bad economy, but it gave me hope that everything's going to be all right. And here I have good news for you. For you, everything's going to be all right for you too. See, when God promises something, it must come true. When man promises, it may come true. There's something exciting about new. Have you ever received a gift and you open it up and the label is not on it? And you wonder, hmm. Then you look at it and it looks a little drab. And you think, this is not new. This is a re-gift. <laughs> or shoes, they put them in a box, they give them to you, and they're already broken in. And they stink a little bit. But when God gives something new, it's a beautiful thing. When you receive something brand new, it's a great thing to be able to exercise whatever God's given you or use whatever God's put in your path. So are you ready for change? Are you ready for growth? Are you ready for expansion? I want to hear some voices out there. 
So we got to get ready for these fulfilled promises. Already he fulfilled Isaiah 42, 45, 2 and 3, treasures that are darkness, still doing it today. Our home with the mother church is now 49 men, treasures out of darkness still coming in to the mother church, 52 years old. We have women in our home. We have people from the streets coming in every day. We have all types of people. But the promise has remained the same. And Isaiah 54 also applies. When it kicked into gear in 1993, my dad presented the United We Can plan to expand this work. And through that plan and through that promise, the new descendants begin to rise up and take cities and take nations. Now they're taking pulpits, they're taking cities, and they're taking countries. And you see what on the stage, we see it right here, you see it in the front. That's the Joshua generation, many of them. But now we're entering the new thing. Don't remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, Judah at this time, which the scripture and this word was given to them by the Lord, is called upon to forget when they struggled to be a nation. Forget the struggle. Don't dwell on the past. You have made it through the valley. You've made it through the storms. God's been faithful to see us through this far. God knows all and sees all. If he kept us all these years, he wants to keep us moving forward for the new years. But you got to understand his promises are true. Be assured this, that he works all things together for the good, for those who are called of God and love him. Called according to his purpose. Do you know your purpose today? Do you know your calling today? You see... But somebody who doesn't know they're calling a purpose, it, they, they walk aimlessly through life. They waste time trying to figure things out in the natural. When God is right there waiting to give you an answer, waiting to give you your own vision within the vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But where there is vision, the people flourish. So when you catch this vision of Victory Outreach, in this great vision, there is a place for you. There's thousands of people in Victory Outreach, but only a, a portion of them or a certain percentage are actually answering the call. So in this county, in this region, we want to see a good percentage begin to rise up and answer the call. You may say, well, I don't think I have what it takes. Well, I don't think this, I don't think Stop believing the lie. Stop dwelling on your past. Stop dwelling on the struggle and know that God is for you. He loves you. He and he wants us to trust him. See, the journey from Egypt to the promised land was a hard one. And they referred back to Egypt. Many of you know the story. It was better to be in Egypt. Really better to be in chains. Ready to be on taskmasters. Because they didn't see the promise going forward. Over there. In the wilderness, when you're in the struggle, you don't see the promise. It's not bright. So you think, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to go back to what I used to do. It's a big mistake when you're being tested. It's a big mistake when you're going through hardship that you give up on that promise. You give up on that vision. There's no doubt the struggle is real. The struggle is difficult. The struggle can be humbling. And the struggle can be hard. But when the struggle is over, be willing and ready to step into the new. Some people are right one step away from the new thing. But they're held back with fear, held back with struggle, held back with all these uh, complexes, held back with anxiety and all these different things, holding them back, worry, doubt. But God says, open up that door and step into the new. Come on, somebody clap for that. Don't get tired of me out there. It's like childbirth. When people have kids, there's, it's, it's painful, right, women? I don't know the pain as much as you do, but we have five kids, as you know. The first one, my wife went into labor when I was preaching on a Sunday morning. So they sent me a note at the end, toward the end of the service, before the altar call. I got the note. I, I handed the mic to Pastor Charlie, and I said, I'm going to the hospital. So I rushed to the hospital and waited and waited all night long <laughs> till 11 a.m. the next morning. But then we had the second one, Jordan, and the same thing happened. I'm preaching. I, I have a good way of putting people into labor. I don't know <laughs> when I preach. So if you're pregnant, be ready. <laughs> so 
He gave me a note again. This time, I did the altar call. Took a little more time. Talked to a few people. <laughs> then I finally went to the hospital, and it didn't happen until 11 a.m. the same day. Same, uh, the next day. Okay. So a third time. Crazy, huh? Third time. And it happened again. On a Sunday morning, I get a note. I put her into labor again. But you know what great, was great about her? She would come to church all... <laughs> she didn't stay at home. She came as... <laughs> she was committed. But I... I induced labor. It's one of my gifts. So this time I get another note. And this time, I did a long altar call. I mean, I just prayed for people, and people falling on the floor, and just went all out. Then I counseled some people. Then I went out to lunch. Because <laughs> I knew this is going to take a long time again. And sure did again. <laughs> Okay, so let's skip our fourth because it, I didn't induce labor that time. That was a different day. The fifth one, I didn't induce that one either, but I, didn't, I don't take all the credit because God does all that, but I feel like I was used as a vessel. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, this time, it was Cody, our fifth child, and she was going to labor again. This is, we were at home. And so we go to the hospital, and they test her, and they tell her it's false labor. And so they send us home. And I, I thought to Kim, I said, you should know how labor is. <laughs> uh, you're, this is your fifth one. You should have it down. So we, so we go back, and I thought, you know what? We're gonna, I'm going to wait till she's really hurting. Because <laughs> it's late at night. I'm not going to keep driving back and forth. Send me back. Send her back. Blah, blah, blah. So I waited and waited, and she was like, <gasps> she was like I never seen her that quite that bad. So I said, okay, let's go now. <laughs> so we get to the hospital, and they put her in a wheelchair, wheel her in, and she gets on the table, and, and then they say, it's too late for the epidural shot. <laughs> Which the first four, when that, she started squeezing my hand, I get, get that shot. And then she'd go, eh. <laughs> released. But this time, she went through a great, great struggle. And she went through great pain. And it was strength, it was strength, strenuous pain, unbearable. And you see, the struggle sometimes can get that for you. Yeah. Right before you have the birthing of something new. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's the darkest before the dawn comes, right? And sometimes you're thinking it's not going to happen. Like I said, it's right there. Hold on. The struggle is real. It's strenuous. It's painful. But don't walk away because you just got to go through it. And you're going to come out the other end with a new baby. And that could be a baby ministry. That could be a new wife. That could be a new husband. But don't cheat on anybody. Don't leave one for the other. Can't do, we don't do trade-ins at Victory Outreach. <laughs> we can't get stuck in the pain of, or the struggle and lose sight of what God desires to bring forth in our lives. How many of you have been through struggles this year? Trials, conflicts, attacks. Well, you're going to get into the new now. Because that's a symptom. Those birth pains. Those labor pains means that you're going to have a baby. You're going to have something new. See, God knows what you've been through. He has his eye on you. He has his eye on you. His, and I want you to hear this scripture, 43 of Isaiah. But know this. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. Say it after me. Do not fear. Tell the person next to you, do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. 
you are mine. In other words, Victory Outreach, we belong to God. Every single one of us are important to God. He knows every hair on your head. He knows all your past. He knows even your future. And he wants you to fulfill his plan for your life. But you got to step into it. You can't just wait and sit. you got to step into it. And tonight you're hearing a challenging message. You're hearing, you've seen the videos, you've seen what the need is. we got to step into it together. A unified vision. We did it at the Mighty Man to, to, to raise finances for Germany. Many people stepped forward and were at the door of almost getting that building, those buildings presently. I, I've been involved with that one with my sister Debbie and some of the elders. And we're close to getting it. And that's coming too. But there's also, there's also a domestic need. We've been hitting international for years. United We Can Dollars going to international for years. Since 1985, when we first entered Amsterdam, we, didn't, we just had a world evangelism fund. And money was being poured into Amsterdam. And through that financial giving and through those prayers and through those missionaries, it started a movement in Europe. That's why she's here today. Susie, he, she's here today as a product of somebody's sacrifice. See, everything we step into, God wants to birth something. And it's birthing souls. It's birthing hurting people. Somebody stepped out for you. That's why you're alive today. That's why you're breathing today. That's why you're able to clap today. That's why you're able to smile. Today. That's why you're able to jump, shout, move. Somebody stepped into the new for you. When I stepped into the new thing of starting this ministry or taking over the, the youth ministry, I didn't realize because I had a struggle relating with people. I had a struggle that was mostly cholos. Tattoos. Beanies, Pendletons, khakis up to here. <laughs> and I had Levi's, tennis shoes, baseball jersey. I didn't relate at first, but you know what I try to do? I try to dress like them, talk like them. I say, hey, if I thought, what's up? That's it. I try to walk a little bit like them. <laughs> they look like a duck. What's up, loco? Zapato? Viejo? I don't know. I don't want to say cuss for accident. And some of these words, I didn't know what they meant. <laughs> Essay? And so when I would try to do that when I was preaching, they would be laughing at me, just like you are. They are laughing at me. So one day, the Lord says, be yourself. Be comfortable in your own style, your own personality. Just have my heart for the people. So when God put on my heart, he says, make sure that you just go, don't go after churches alone. Go after church kids. Go after others. So we could combine forces and have a powerful ministry. So they begin to catch it. And something new began. A powerful revival came through that. Pastor Al got saved. My sister Jordan got saved. Kim later got saved. All, all these different people that you see in different parts of the world, right here in the second row, they, he got saved. They're both, all four of those people, not four, but two of them. But anyway, the, the point of the matter is, right at the brink of a breakthrough, you're going to go through trials. At that point, I wanted to quit. I wanted to go back to baseball. And I was in Bible college, but they offered me an opportunity to play for a college. Because I played a game and they liked me, and I had to make a choice. Do I stick with the plan? With the vision God gave me? And in the midst of the struggle, I had to make a secondary decision. And I decided, because they didn't let me play post, be in school at the other one, and be at the one for baseball. I was going to try to do both. They said, it's, it's illegal, we can't do that. So I had to make a decision again. In the midst of, of my failure, or in the midst of my struggle, I made a decision to stick with Bible college. And I made a decision to stick with the youth ministry. And shortly after that, my new began. The new thing began. Hung in there. Same thing with my dad. He felt like quitting in the early 70s. He was struggling. It wasn't working. But he was at a conference. He spoke. He was discouraged. He was ready to quit. But the new thing was right around the corner. And through the man of God, Right before he closed the service, he says, Sonny, stand up, Pastor Sonny. 
I got a word for you. I will go before you. Make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of bronze. I'll cut bars of I'll give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I who call you my name am the God of Israel. My dad latched onto that. He also got 54 at the time, but it didn't make sense at the time, so he went with the treasures part. Shortly after that, revival kicked in. But what if he backed out at that time? This whole new thing that's never been done before. At that time, we never seen churches like this. They were reaching people on the streets for Teen Challenge, but they would leave the churches because they didn't work with them because they didn't know how to work with them. So my dad felt the need for addicts and their families. He gave them a vision, but he had a struggle at the beginning. He went through trials and many other trials, I'm sure, too. But when he got that promise, he got something to hold on to. And he began to stand up. Hey, you are treasures out of darkness. And they begin to rise up. Those guys were the pioneers. And we see these generations. Now we're into a new era where God is calling new people. And he's calling you today. In fact, I have more stuff. But I'm just going to go with what I'm going with. Children of Israel. They were the spies, right? They went into spy out the land, the 12 spies. Now, when they go into the land, they went with the promise. But what happened when they saw the giants in the land, 10 of those spies began to get worried that we can't do this. They had a grasshopper complex. Instead of looking at the promise giver and the promises, they even had fruit. They even had all the, they saw the milk and honey. They were able to bring that fruit back. Just like we have brought the fruit back from the treasures. Just like we have brought the fruit back from the Isaiah 54, 2 and 3. Now we're entering into Isaiah 59, 21. From descendant to descendant to descendant, it shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, a whole third wave that God is bringing to the victory out. And sometimes... The minority is the right. Sometimes people follow the majority opinion. And that's what the children of Israel did. They followed the majority of a false opinion because they were in fear. But Caleb quieted the crowd. He says, listen, there, there are giants in the land, but God has promised us and we could take them out. But they didn't listen to him. Only two were able to say, yes, we could do it, Joshua and Caleb. That whole generation was lost because they refused to step into something new. Something that was promised. And, and what happened is because of that, they, they, they begin to uh, just tell them, look it, we, we have this problem. And they pleaded with the people. But they didn't believe. And because of that, they didn't enter in. Today I'm giving you promises. I just gave you the history. Some of it. And now there's more history to be made. And you're part of it. You could be a history maker and a world shaker. But today you're going to have an opportunity to be a history maker. Because what we're doing in the East Coast, in Ohio, is very new. We're opening up a home. You saw the video. There's a big need. I've been in Germany. Huge need. That's why I was able to give and stand on that stage on Mighty Man. Because I saw the need with my own eyes. I see the need in Holland. I see the need in Cape Town, in South Africa. All over the world we go. And thank God, Victory Outreach is putting a flag in those places. So are we going to take the challenge for the new territory? Because God wants to do something. You know what's great about Joshua and Caleb? They represented two generations. Caleb was older. Joshua was younger. So it's like two generations coming together to go into that promise. They were the only ones that were able to enter the promise later down the road, about 20-something years later. And they were able to take the land and possess the land. Right now, we don't have time to waste. So we can't be refusing the call of God right now because now is the time. God is knocking on the door of your heart. So if you're in a struggle today, maybe you're that caterpillar that goes and eats the leaves and then goes into the cocoon and enters a dark place. But in the cocoon, he ends up eating his own nutrients to begin to form into something totally different, a metamorphosis. It's a miracle that, see, you got to believe there's a God if you could do that. Slithering on the ground, eating leaves then in a cocoon, and then all of a sudden starting to build strength, 
But in that struggle, you're still trying to get that cocoon off. And if someone comes along and tells you this or that and tries to break that cocoon right before you're able to break open on your own new thing, don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let people lie to you. People, pe people could be naysayers. Just like those 10 spies, there's 10 spies probably in your life. They're telling you can't. They're telling you can't be done. They're telling you you're not good enough. You're not this. Or you begin to believe the past. Don't consider the things of old. For God is doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Some of you are blurred in your vision. Me and my dad had eye surgery together. My mom was first. We said, Mom, you be the guinea pig. So me and my dad would say, well, we're going to wait and see how it turns out for her. And my mom's tough. She said, oh, I'll do it. Yeah, sure. So she did it. She came out with glasses and we waited a, you know, a month or two. And she, could, she said, I could see. I could read. I don't have to wear glasses. So me and my dad went. And we both had it the same day, the surgery. And uh, after that, we went home. We, she had to take me home because I can't drive after that. And my mom took my dad home. So I called my dad that night. And I said, what do you see? He says, I see trees. <laughs> Men like trees walking. He had blurred vision. My dad, the visionary, had blurred vision. Then I told him what I saw. I go, you know what, Dad, what I see? When I look down, I see like, Disneyland, you know, the teapots? The, the ride, they spin, they spin. They spin. He said, yeah, I have floaters and I have trees and... I go, I have spinners. <laughs> and then, oh my God, that was funny. And I thought, man, I wonder how it is to be on LSD. That must be how it is. <laughs> right, Barry? Yeah. <laughs> but little by little, our eyes began to heal. We started to perceive. And some of you, your eyes are healing tonight. You're getting a spiritual surgery on your vision. Give the Lord a praise clap right now. Come to the piano. Give the Lord a praise. You see, when that caterpillar comes out of that cocoon, he comes out strong and ready to fly. No longer eating off the floor, slithering on the ground, and, and just being that, that you know, part of, uh, of the old creation. Now he's entering into a new creation. So old things have passed away for you. New things have become in your life today. You are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things become new. And you know what it is about a butterfly? They don't eat the leaves. They go to the nectar. They go to the flowers. They're able to fly and enjoy. their new. Their new form as a new butterfly. But they went through a struggle to get there. Some of you right now are slithering. You're eating, you're eating the milk right now. You're drinking the milk. But God's gonna take you to another level. As you get trained and developed, MTC is a good place to go. Or Bethy, or even here at this church, they train you well. But you're gonna go through a process and you're going to ent enter a cocoon at one point in time. You may be in it right now. But it's worth the struggle. Because when you come out of the cocoon, if you stick it out, don't let anyone get in your way. Don't let anyone, don't let anyone take that cocoon or the process off your life. You stick it out. And in that cocoon, you're lonely at times. You're hanging on to a promise. You're hanging on to the fact that God made you to fly. And so when you come out going to be a beautiful butterfly and I believe I read this before that but all butterflies are different in their look and their form some of them. And, and all of us are different but we have the same God that formed us all that loves us all and that has called us all so let's stand right now come on you can give a glory to Clarence hand clap come on clap your hands if you need prayer, if you want to answer the call, come down. We're going to pray for you right now. No one leave this place, though. Only one. Go.
God has something great for this generation, something great for you, even for the pastor, something new for you.